I have six different tents here, three of which I own, two of which my boyfriend owns, and one of which our friends lent to us. There are so many different places to camp and there are so many different kinds of tents and choosing the right tent for the place that you're going to be camping is very important. The very first question that you need to answer, of course, is what are you going to be using the tent for? Is it primarily going to be a backpacking tent or is it primarily going to be a car camping tent? By car camping, I mean that you're going to drive to a campsite and set up your tent, in which case weight and bulk is going to be far less of an issue. The next question that you're going to need to answer is when you will be using your tent. You get three season and four season tents, and if you're not going to be using your tent in winter at all, then I would recommend looking at the three season tents because they tend to be a lot cheaper. In South Africa, I should also mention that unless you're going to be climbing to the top of some mountains, then getting a four season tent might be overkill. If you do plan to be camping in really cold weather, then you definitely should look at the four season options. Four season tents tend to have fly sheets that come all the way to the ground, more solid looking inners to retain warmth, less ventilation, and more intersection of the poles of the tent and this is to allow for snow loading so that the tent can actually handle being snowed on. This is not to say that you can't use a three season tent in mountainous winter conditions. I have actually taken the Black Diamond Mirage, which is pitched just next to me, up onto the escarpment of the Drakensberg in the middle of winter when temperatures did drop below freezing, although we did not have any snow, and it was actually fine. But particularly if you're a first time backpacker, I would not recommend getting a three season tent if you're routinely going to be encountering very cold conditions. Another very important consideration when you're buying a tent is how many people you're going to need to fit inside of it. My rule of thumb is to try to get a tent that is advertised as being able to sleep one additional person to the number that you're actually trying to fit in. So if you're going to be two people sleeping in the tent, try to get a three person tent. And the reason why I say this is because that will allow you a bit of extra arm and leg space and will also allow you to store the gear inside of the tent with you. If you're going to be car camping and are looking at much larger tents, then you can also think about how many rooms you want the tent to have. Is it adequate to just have one big room tent or do you want separate rooms for you and your kids? You should also know that different tent manufacturers use different metrics for figuring out how many people can fit inside of a tent. So in addition to looking at whether it's advertised as a two person, three person or one person tent, you should also look at the dimensions of the actual floor space of the tent. Something that I have actually found super helpful when I'm shopping for tents, especially when I'm looking at tents online, is to make sure that I know exactly what my budget is. This red tent in front of me, for instance, is the Hilleberg Alak 3. It is by far the most expensive tent that I have set up here. On the other end of the spectrum, the tent behind me, the green one, is a Quetcher? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's the Quetcher Arpenaz 2. And this is a very budget tent. It is by far the cheapest tent that I have set up here. So hopefully at this point, you have a short list of tents that you could potentially buy. What is really important is that you see all of these tents pitched. This can be really problematic if you're trying to buy tents online, particularly if they're not available in your own country. But in that case, I would say try to watch videos of the tent being pitched and get people, especially if you're buying secondhand tents, to send you photographs of the tent pitched and particularly close up photographs of all of the fixtures on the tent. When you go to look at the tent pitched, some of the things that you should be checking for is how waterproof the tent is. 
A really good way of checking this is to check the seams on the inside. The seams should have tape or some sort of other waterproof sealing so that water doesn't get through the sewing holes. So you can see with this tent, although it is a super budget tent, it still has seam sealing tape all along the seams. I have seen a lot of budget tents that have absolutely no waterproofing on the seams whatsoever. And when it rains, there is going to be leakage through those seams. Some tents I have actually pitched and you can see daylight through the stitching holes. So definitely check the seams on the tent that you're planning to buy. For backpacking tents, it's especially important to not only think about how they will do in cold or wet weather, but in windy weather as well. This Black Diamond Squall has the most intersecting crossovers of the tent poles of any of the tents here, and you can really see how stable it is. In comparison, the budget Arpenaz tent over here really would not stand up well to a windstorm. Something else that you need to check is how durable the tent material is. A really budget tent like this is not going to stand up to being ripped through thorn trees or put on very rocky ground. However, a canvas tent like this can last four years and withstand quite a lot of abuse. In fact, canvas tents like this are generally the tents of choice for people who go and camp in nature reserves like the Kruger National Park because they do tend to be a lot of thorn trees and a lot of uneven rocky ground. And these tents just shrug that off. They are made of incredibly durable material and they also last a very, very long time. Something else that you should take into consideration is how heavy the tent is that you're planning to buy. If you're going to be backpacking with the tent, then obviously this is a very important consideration. But even if you're going car camping, how heavy the tent is and how bulky it is can put you off if you don't have a lot of space in your car. If you're planning to fly with the tent, then getting a backpacking tent that is smaller and lighter weight is probably your only option. I have actually weighed all of the tents that I have set up here. The lightest one is in fact this very budget tent, probably because of the materials that are used that are very lightweight materials. This one is about 2.2 kilograms. I'll put the weights up on the screen as I talk about them. The next heaviest is this Black Diamond Mirage, which is actually the first tent that I ever bought. And it is marketed as a lightweight backpacking tent. Both the Black Diamond Mirage and the Arpenaz budget tent are marketed as two person tents. The next lightest tent is the Hilleberg Alak 3, and this is marketed as a three person tent. So it could actually come out to a lower weight if you're planning to split the weight three ways with this tent. The last of the backpacking tents is the Black Diamond Squall which is also marketed as being a three-person tent. You can actually fit four people in it if you sleep along the other direction of the inner tent and just sacrifice a little bit of leg room. And that brings us to the first of the car camping tents, which is this K-Way Horizon six-person tent. This is about 11 and a half kilograms, so definitely not a backpacking tent. Finally, there is our canvas tent, which because of the extremely durable materials used, weighs in at a whopping 22 and a half kilograms. At this point, you've probably whittled down your short list of tents quite substantially, but if there are still multiple options that you're looking at, the next thing that you should look at is the livability of the tent. Quite a few factors come into play here, such as how many doors the tent has, how many vestibules the tent has, and what sort of height you have to deal with. Car camping tents in general are really livable. You can not only sit up straight in them, but you can stand up straight, which makes getting changed inside the tent a whole lot easier. 
Backpacking tents, on the other hand, tend to be a lot lower, but you can find ones where you can at least sit up straight. If you're a taller person, then you definitely need to look at the floor plan of the tent and make sure that when you're lying down, your head and your feet aren't going to be touching the sides. Some other features that tents can include to improve the livability include things like pockets and hooks for hanging items from the ceiling. Some of them even have gear lofts where you can place headlamps or lanterns, which is a very nice feature. My last tip when you're looking at buying a tent is to see how easy it is to pitch. Some tents actually require two people, like this tent behind me. It would be very difficult to set this up on your own, and I know that because I have actually set this tent up on my own before. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult. This tent also takes the longest out of any of the six tents here to pitch, but it does offer a lot of space. If you have your own tips when buying a tent, then please feel free to leave them in the comments below because I am always ready to learn some new stuff too. And if you like this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel.